Okay, today I want to show you how to make um, mechanically correct threads in Blender. Blender is a free um, 3D art program, but it, it's also good for videos and for 3D printing and a, a whole slew of other things. And um, again, yeah, it's free. It's cross-platform. I'm using Ubuntu, and so it's compatible with Linux. Um, the threads that I'm working on are M22 by 1.5, which means that um, the outside diameter is 22 millimeters, and between the threads is 1.5 millimeters. Um, the angle I'm going to be using is 60 degrees. So for me to convert the um, my mesh in Blender, I created a uh, mathematical function. First, uh, I guess you could open Blender delete the cube. I'm going to add a plane. Then I'm going to hit I'm going to go over to and this is this is where I did my math. And the location is going to be the I guess the outside diameter, right? Uh, half of that because um, in Blender oh my my goodness. In Blender um, we move on a coordinate system, right? So I need half of my diameter because I'm going to spin this in a second, right? So it's half of the diameter minus um, the thread thickness times a conversion, um, which is, this will be my Y conversion, which is square root of 3 over 2. And the reason I have that conversion is because we want the 60 degrees on the y-axis. Um, and then you divide that by 2, and again, you so that you have... Um, let's go back to Blender. So it's the diameter, 22 inches, right? Or which or 22 millimeters, which would, in this case, since it's cut in half, it would be 11 millimeters. And then we subtract... Um, the thickness of the the plane before we screw it. Okay, so that is the number that I want. That's the number you'll need. And that'll be my location for the y axis. Yeah, it's not very big. We're going it's oh wait, you know what? I gotta make sure that I'm in metric. Hold on, let me make sure I'm metric. Uh, in Blender hit metric. And just to be double sure, let me, okay. Then the next thing is I want to scale my X and Z to be one half of my thread thickness. Now, the reason I'm doing one half the thread thickness is because um, this base plane they give us is actually, um, you can see it's, it's four, it's two square units, right? Which makes a surface area for. Um, but we need to shrink that in half for it to be one square meter, which is the units that we'll be using. So on the scale, I'm going to hit uh, do that for X and Z. For Y, I'm going to be using this, which is uh, half of that. Wait, what is the... Uh, oh yeah, that's right. And here's my what is the oh yeah my conversion um, ratio three square root of three over two you're multiplying that um, let's see so the again the the y um, axis I'm gonna scale it by um, half of the thread thickness times square root of three over two. Because again, I want 60, 60 degrees. Okay, so if I, oh, I have clipping, so you want to open this tab and let's make sure that, where's the view? Uh, not centimeters, millimeters, yeah, that should work. There we are. You want to make sure that your clipping is, uh, your camera clipping is small enough to be compatible with your dimensions. Okay, now with that being said, I'm going to hit 7, 5. I want because you want to be in top orthographic. I'd hit the uh, decimal button, hit tab into edit mode, or you can graphically select edit mode. Um, hit the edges, select both 
the top and bottom edges, subdivide. Then we're going to hit, go back into vertice mode, hit the knife. There we are. And make sure that you are selecting the right edges. I'm going to hold shift and select these two faces and delete them. Delete faces. Okay. And then I am going to hit control alt or control A, sorry. I'm going to select location, rotation, and scale. And each time I did that, I, I hit control A. Okay, now I'm going to select these bottom two edges and I'm going to hit E for extrude, Y to constrain it on the Y axis. I'm going to pull it down a good length. Um, then I'm going to select the cross inside and these two edges and hit delete edges. Okay, now in object mode, again, I'm going to make sure that um, this is zero, these are zero, and this is one. So now I'm going to hit add modifier, screw. I'm going to make sure that I'm going around the y axis. Oh, oh x axis. I apologize. And my screw, um, it's got to be, is it one? Hold on a second. Screw pitch, 1.5. Is that is that what I'm looking for? Yeah, that's it. So my screw pitch is the thickness of my my threads, and I'm going to increase my steps up to 80 because I like high definition threads. These are these are actually going to be threads. Like I'm literally going to 3D print these. Like I don't have time to waste on on low graphics or. <laughs> Uh, let's do 100, actually, because I honestly am cool with that. Okay, now um, in my actual threads, I have five iterations. Um, I honest, I could go more, but five works for me. It's what they did, so it's what I'll do. I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to save it on my desktop as screw perfect. The underscore because I'm a Linux lover. I'm gonna hit apply. Make sure you're in object mode when you apply. Let's go back to edit mode. Hit A to select everything. Then hit remove doubles. So now this has become one solid mesh. I'm going to select this and this. Hit face. Interesting. And um, there's other ways to do this. Control Alt M. I could do fill, and then Control T for um, triangle. Um, but obviously, on this side, I have to fill in one face first. Hold on. Fill F for fill. So then Shift Control M, um, F for fill, T for triangulate. So that's one way of filling it. Um, but I'm going to control Z, undo all that, and I'm going to fill it. Um, there's another way to do it. There's the quad way. You don't have to hit shift, control, alt, M all the time to do um, uh, manifold select. You could just sel hit select and click non-manifold, and we could get to the top view, make this transparent. And if I were to just hit control F and grid fill right now, it, it wouldn't it would have a problem with it. But if I were to deselect one side and have only one non-manifold face unfilled and then hit Control F, grid fill, you will see that it'll do a nice grid fill. So that's kind of how to do the grid fill. Again, you only have to do, um, and then I can hit, again, select non-manifold, and I could do it on this side. Um, I'm trying to show you other ways of doing this. You could also just, after you, you fill in one face, you know, you select the edge towards the faces that need to be filled and hold down F. 
and it'll just nicely fill it in for you. In fact, I prefer that method. Um, I have my own reasons for that, even though like the grid fill is obviously just as effective. And um, that's pretty much it for the topology. Okay, so here's my threads. Um, they're ready to be 3D printed. Um, we can go into Cura real quick. Um, thread perfect for, <coughs> open it up. And I don't see anything. That is weird. Why isn't it showing up? Ah, oh, there we are. Still loading. And we can set this right side up. I'll get it through the layers, make sure that we don't need any support material. Looks like it'll take about an hour to print. And you can see right quick, um, we don't have any um, normal errors. You can tell pretty quick just by even um, using the x-ray function is kind of nice. You can see if, uh, if you've got zero space inside of your object. Um, if you didn't know, um, if you don't know how to do it, um, all I did is I used the, um, the Boolean um, modifier to attach a barrel and other components to my threads. You can look those tutorials up online on YouTube. I'm just showing you the thread, um, the thread tutorial, but I also want to prove the, the concept by actually 3D printing it. So yeah, uh, yeah again, um, make sure it's not manifold. You can go and you can uh, um, load it onto Shapeways. You know, they'll show you Y your scale and the and the price range it'll be that and yeah let's let's print this baby <laughs> check it out that's it 3d printed it tonight at heatsink labs um i think it's a 100 micron resolution and if we compare it to the actual spider barrel the one that i was using uh, it's it's not as long but you can see that the threads match up perfectly. Right, can you see that they match up perfectly? Yeah, you can see they match up perfectly. And just to demonstrate, there's a spider gun. And that's solid. That's beautiful. Yep, that's that's what threads are all about. They have to screw into something, and it just so happens too that this particular where'd my paintball go. Hmm. Oh, it, ah, here we are. It also fits the paintball. Yay! So it serves as its functionality, and now I can continue on and make my silencer. So thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And leave me comments if you have any questions. And 